Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. Hey, and welcome back. It's June 13th. It is a special Wednesday edition, episode 23 of the Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. It is a special Money in the Bank Predictions Podcast. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get into that. First, I'd like to say that this will be broadcast on YouTube and CastBox. You can find me on Twitter at OMG Corey B and at Two Sweet Pod. That's the number two. Sweet P O D. So we're gonna get right on into this. Not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna try to have some sort of semblance on this today. We're gonna put the tag matches with the tag matches. We're gonna put the two women's matches together. We're gonna put the two money in the bank matches together. World Championship goes on last, and then we'll see how everything else shakes out. So first up, we have. The Deleters of Worlds, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt versus the B-Team. This should be quite an interesting match. Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas. I find this quite interesting because we got the two brothers facing off against each other. Bray Wyatt, Bo Dallas. That's quite fun. I got a brother. That would be fun if I was involved in a storyline with my brother in wrestling. I kind of find that pretty cool. But how we got here? The B-Team. Looking to make a name for themselves after the Miz left to SmackDown. They won the Tag Team Battle Royal. Got the number one contendership for the titles. And it's been a pretty cool thing. It, it, the B Team is cheesy. And you know what? It, it, it was, it's cheesy enough to get a response from the crowd. The crowd loves it. And the, the shirts are cheesy. The crowd loves the shirts. So it's been a pretty cool thing to watch. As for Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, man. The air has just gone out of the balloon. This was the last hope for this storyline and to get some kind of juice, some kind of something behind this storyline and it just hasn't worked. They're trying, they're trying to tell us off, but it's like the air out of the balloon has just been let out. So looking at my prediction, I have WWE riding the momentum of the B team too. The Tag Team Championships. I think they will pull off the championships here. We'll have a rematch at some point. Maybe at the next pay-per-view in July. SummerSlam, whenever. But the B-Team will win the titles. At Money in the Bank. So moving on, we have the SmackDown. Tag Team Championships up for grabs. We have the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Good Brothers. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. This should be a fun, hard-hitting match. The Good Brothers got the number one contendership by beating the Usos. And I got to say, that match was pretty telegraphed because I knew they, were, they weren't going down the, the Usos and Bludgeon Brothers road again. We just got done with that. So it was pretty obvious that the Good Brothers were going to win there. But looking at this match, this should be a pretty interesting match. I'm looking forward to it as far as the action goes. I'm very excited for this match. I, the t- SmackDown Tag Team Championships haven't been at the forefront whatsoever, but this should be fun. Anderson got a pretty surprise win over Harper uh, on a not the most recent SmackDown. I think it was a couple of weeks ago where he got that surprise roll-up win. I thought that was pretty cool. But looking at as far as this match, obviously the Good Brothers, they haven't been doing a whole lot with them. Outside of this, so I don't really see them coming out victorious here. I think the result, this is one of the most obvious picks on the card. And this is called, it's full of unpredictability. But after this match, the Bludgeon Brothers will pull off the victory here. So moving on, we have Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. Oh man, like what am I supposed to say here? Like, I have nothing to work with. I do these prediction shows, I write my notes down, and I get to this match, and it's nothing. Like, the only thing I have down written down is sisters. And because this is just where it just went downhill, the Bobby Lashley sister segment, just... <sighs> Next day on YouTube, I said I was so offended. I made a YouTube video about it, you can check it out, under the WWE Raw section, on my page. Shameless plug, that is. But... There's been nothing to this feud, an obstacle course on the 
most recent episode we're on. But at the end of the day, your winner will be Bobby Lassity. Face has to come out in the end, get his revenge here. And just thank goodness this feud will be over with. This catastrophe will be over with. So moving on, we have Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. Daniel Bryan tapped Big Cass out at Backlash. I think it was. Yeah, that's, that, that was Backlash. He tapped Big Cass out. And this feud has been underwhelming to say the least. We all assumed that we were getting the Miz and Daniel Bryan, but I'm I, from a standpoint, I'm a, I'm glad that they held off on that. They're slow playing that. I'm glad with that. But to say that we got Daniel Bryan and Big Cass is just, ugh, ugh. Big Cass. They really need to do something about that entrance, by the way. I'm pretty sure you've seen it. By the way, Big Cass's entrance. I'm not gonna even go any further into that. But this build has been based on height insults. Like they have given Big Cass nothing, and Big Cass doesn't really interest me like talking about it, but they've given them nothing to say but but to clown Daniel Bryan's height and we can't get anything else out of that. Like, ugh, nothing put into this feud whatsoever. But as for the result, the Big Cass better win here because if, if you don't, you might as well fire him. I mean, fire him. He's already fired like Ric Flair and Bischoff. Fire him if he loses this match because he has somewhere to go but downhill. Big Cass should win this match. We get a funny finish, a funny result somehow. Somehow, Big Cass wins. And that will be what will happen. He will get the win and he will move on. Both guys will move on, in my opinion. So next up, we have Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal. And this is quite interesting. I all got started when Mahal stopped Roman Reigns from winning the Money in the Bank, from entering the Money in the Bank matchup. So it's been... I don't know if I can say interesting, but it's been quite the feud to look at because Roman Reigns has been pretty much acting like a heel all the way except for last week. That is attack gender from blind side attack on gender. And I mean, we had the, the segment last week where, of course, gender healed it up. Roman comes out, beats down Jin, uh, Singh, excuse me. And looking at this feud, looking at this match, I said it the night that Jinder Mahal attacked Roman Reigns. I said it. I said, look, man, I understand what they're trying to do. Trying to get the crowd to cheer Roman Reigns, boom, Mahal. But when we get in Chicago, I'm telling you what's going to go down or what's likely to go down. Just like I said, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, that storyline, I said that that storyline could cause people to turn on the match. Nobody believed me at the time. That was at the time when Roman Reigns cut the fiery promo to open up the feud. The crowd turned on the match. So here we are. Jinder Mahal attacks Roman Reigns. And I'm here to tell you, the night that that happened, I said, look, Chicago is probably going to get restless with this feud. They're probably going to boo Roman Reigns. If anything, Jinder Mahal might get a pop. So, I mean... Looking at this feud and this match, it's just, there, there's going to be no complaining if the crowd turns on the match. I don't want to hear no complaints whatsoever because they've told the story. They knew the, the risk going into this type of feud, going into Chicago. So at the end of the day, I have Roman Reigns as the winner here. At the end of the day, Roman Reigns has no business losing to Jinder Mahal, of all people. So moving on, we have Seth Rollins versus Elias. Boy, this is a tough... I told you this is one of the more unpredictable pay-per-views in recent memory. This is one of the tough ones. Now we, we've reached the stage where it gets tough from here on in, outside of maybe one match. So looking at this matchup, we had Seth Rollins going around. Initially, the report was they had nothing for Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank, and I was just sitting around saying, like, really? This is like the... One of the premier stars of Raw, and you have nothing for him. So we finally get into the feud with Elias. Elias smacks him over the head, kabongs him over the head with the guitar. 
man, they really need to get Jeff Jarrett in there to work with Elias to make sure he does these guitar shots safely. Because I remember he roughed Finn Balor up one of those times with those guitar shots. But but moving on, stay on track. This is interesting because you see Seth Rollins and you think, okay, this dude is ready for the main event of Raw. He's arguably him and Braun Strowman. He's the, the they're the two guys that's ready to take down Brock Lesnar. So you're thinking that okay, the only way that can happen is if Seth Rollins loses the Intercontinental Title. I mean, I'm, they're not gonna have him hold up both belts. So this is a tricky situation. And it all depends on if I think that Seth, they will roll with Seth Rollins at SummerSlam to take down Brock Lesnar. And I do not think that they will have him take down Brock Lesnar. Uh, that would be nice. But I don't think it's going to happen. So therefore, I have Seth Rollins retaining the Intercontinental Championship. I have flip-flopped on this match so many times. It is just Hilarious how many times I flip flop on this match. I'm at the but at the end I'm gonna go with Seth Rollins to retain the championship. I'm gonna swing that belt around one more time. Maybe he'll drop it in July, maybe he'll drop it at SummerSlam. We'll see. So moving on, we have the two money in the bank matchups. And you want to talk about unpredictability. Uh, this just fits it all the way. I, I'm pretty certain on the men's Money in the Bank winner, but the, the women's Money in the Bank, oh man, I have no clue. But I have an idea. So first we're going to start off with the women's Money in the Bank match. So what I typically like to do here is play process of elimination. In wrestling, that's what I get down to in results from multi-man matches, especially in ladder matches and money in the bank matches. So we're going to play the process of elimination game. We have Ember Moon versus Charlotte versus Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch versus Natalya versus Lana. The whole women's roster is in the match versus Naomi versus Sasha Banks. They couldn't even get Bailey in the match. Sheesh. But Looking at the process of elimination, I think Ember Moon is up first of all. She's just gotten there. She's just fresh into a run. I don't think they're going to put the briefcase on her. Moving on, Charlotte Flair. I think she's at a point in her career to where she's above holding the money in the bank, money in the bank, excuse me, briefcase. So I don't think she's going to win it. They're going to, eventually Charlotte is going to rise back to the top into a women's title field eventually anyway, so, so she doesn't need to have the Money in the Bank briefcase. So moving on, who else I'm going to knock out is Lana. I don't think they'll go with her either as Miss Money in the Bank. I'm not sure if they're serious about Lana being a competitor in the women's division, a serious competitor as far as competing for the title. We'll see on that. So, next up, we have a Naomi. It starts, it's starting to get really tricky here. We have Naomi. I think Naomi's out. I don't think she's going to be Miss Money in the Bank. So, now, we get here, and it's anybody's ball game, to be quite honest with you. Is it anybody can win? We have Alexa Bliss, Becca, Becky Lynch. Sasha Banks and Natalya. Those four, any one of them can win this match, to be quite honest. So we got to start knocking people out. I think Alexa Bliss is out because she just came off the field with Nia Jax. I don't think they're going to reinsert her as Miss Money in the Bank after losing the title this soon. So she's out. Uh, it's getting tough now because these three ladies... I'm going to have to say Sasha Banks is out. I don't think they're serious about Sasha Banks. And she's been on a dreadful run, dreadful run for a long time. I don't think they'll put her in there. So it gets down to Becky Lynch and Natalya. And it's a 50-50 ball game. Because I've had Becky Lynch this entire month. Or this entire time. Heading into Money in the Bank. Except for last week. For whatever reason. I feel that. Yes, Natalya got the victory. On the go home show, and normally you reach the stage to where it's like, 
you know, the person that gets the victory on the go home show doesn't win on the pay per view. But I'm gonna go against conventional wisdom here and say that Natalia will be Miss Money in the Bank. She's gonna win. I don't know if she catches in that night, but she will win. So moving on, we have the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We have Braun Strowman versus Finn Balor versus The Miz versus Rusev versus Bobby Roode versus Owens versus a New Day member versus Samoa Joe. I'm gonna say my height, slight guess is that Big E will be the New Day member that represents the New Day. So, this is another tricky one, but I'm fairly certain about this one. I don't think Braun Strowman is going to win here because like, it, this is just something that doesn't fit him. And also, he's kind of like in the range of a Charlotte Flair to where he's above the Money in the Bank briefcase. So, I, I don't think he wins. I think he's certainly out. Certainly out. So, Finn Balor, I think he has a chance. And we're going to get down to the names that I think have a chance, but I really feel like are out. We're going to get down to Finn Balor, Rusev, Finn Balor and Rusev, Finn Balor, Rusev, and Bobby Roode, excuse me. Those guys have chances, but I really don't see WWE going with either of them. Bobby Roode is in a funk. I don't think WWE is going to go with Rusev. They're trying to pipe down the Rusev Day chance. And, and Finn Balor, I don't think it's his time to win here. So, we have left The Miz versus Kevin Owens. Versus a new versus the New Day member versus Samoa Joe. I think whatever New Day member comes out, I think they don't win. Whether it's Big E or whomever. Yeah, they won't win. So it's down to who do we have? We have Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe versus the Miz. And we've reached the point to where it's anybody's ball game here. And from this perspective, down to these three men. I know the Miz touched the briefcase. I go <laughs> on the go home show. We have these stupid wrestling rules as fans, and I totally believe every one of them. So I'm writing that witch out. He touched the briefcase. So, but at the end of the day, it was pancakes in the briefcase. So that made me feel even more comfortable to pick the Miz as the person to win at money in the bank will be your mister money in the bank so we've got those two matches out of the way and now we're down to title matches we have up next the women's championship match carmella versus oscar you want to talk about unpredictability this one is so unpredictable the, the both of the women's championship title matches and i have a a, a tournament going on when I'm predicting against people in a March Madness style tournament for Money in the Bank. And it is just crazy because I think my fate comes down to these two matches right here. So I got to win these two matches. Got to get them. Carmella and Asuka. Carmella's title reign has been so-so. Uh, been a meh title reign. I've not been impressed whatsoever. I think they really took the juice out of it. They really should have had her cash in at WrestleMania to give her a WrestleMania moment. I, they haven't ca haven't capitalized, excuse me, on whatever me momentum she had from winning the title. She had a really bad match with Charlotte. So, looking at this match, Asuka needs to win this match. And they're in a position here where Asuka needs this match after losing at WrestleMania. But if Carmella loses, she's kind of done because they've done nothing with her momentum. So, it, that's what makes this a tough matchup. At the end of the day, this is one of those matchups to where I think that we will have a decisive winner. But I'm going to go with Asuka. And I'm not sure if she wins the title here. Maybe we'll get a count out. Maybe we'll get a disqualification somewhere along those lines where Asuka wins and this feud continues. So I got Asuka winning. I don't, I don't think she wins the title. We'll see on that one so next up we have Nia Jax versus Ronda Rousey and man oh man oh man 
This has been interesting to say the least, and not in a good way. This match was thrown together at the Upfront's presentation, and like just one bad misstep after another. Uh, these segments with Nia Jax and Ronda Rousey, I don't blame those two because they're... Nia Jax struggles on the mic, Ronda Rousey is just learning. She, like, she's brand spanking new, so she struggles on the mic. So they've put them in non-enviable situations to where they have to carry the load. And they've had Stephanie there, they've had the coach there, and the segments just haven't gone well. I jump on the train with everyone else when I say that. Why haven't they done these things pre-tape for Ronda Rousey? They do an excellent job of that with Brock Lesnar. That works for him. It would have worked for Ronda Rousey. Astronaut Jax, like I said, weeks upon weeks ago, she's the female big show. Just turning left and right. Turning left and right. Face, heel, face, heel, face, 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 heel, heel, face. What is she now? I don't know. She's compassionate now. I don't know. She's, she's the female big show. She's making the big show proud. He has two thumbs up. Now that she's holding up his his legacy of turning left and right every week. So at the end of the day, this one is a tough one to predict. But at the end of the day, if you have Ronda Rousey in this matchup, Ronda Rousey has to win in some respect. Whether it's a count out disqualification or winning the title, you've thrown her into the situation. You've thrust her into the situation. Now you got to put the title on her. You have no choice or you have to have her win the match and have the feud continue. No matter what... Ronda Rousey will be winning here. So moving on, we have the world title match, WWE title match, AJ Styles versus Shitsuke Nakamura. Knock his nuts. And for the fourth time, we have this matchup. And this is quite interesting because we've been wanting a definitive result for the longest. And now we have a last man standing match to kick us off. And you got to think here that, okay, this is it. This is it. They can't possibly go with another false finish to where we look up and say, man, this feud is continuing again. They can't possibly do that. Nakamura should have won at WrestleMania, in my opinion, but we have a fantastic heel turn after that. And I've been waiting for a Nakamura win here. I, I gotta say, I found it funny when AJ just slapped the crap out of him. That was funny. But as for the winner here, I expect a fantastic matchup. I expect a decisive result. So, therefore, if this feud continues, I can see it continuing, but Nakamura has to win the championship here, fair and square, down the middle. He has to be the last man standing, and I think he will be the last man standing as he pulls off by hook or by crook a win to win the title as AJ Styles falls victim to the 10 count in the last man standing match so those are my predictions for money in the bank it should be a pretty interesting pay-per-view <clears throat> I always find the money in the bank matches I always get excited for those because crazy stuff just happens left and right we'll see how it all turns out and feel free to follow me on twitter at omg Corey B at Too Sweet Pie because I'll be live tweeting every single bit of it.